Hi, my name is Kate Alberti, and I'm part of the cholera team uh, at WHO working with Dominique. And I am not the chair of the, uh, of the case management working group. I'm presenting on behalf of Dr. Iqbal Hossein from the ICDDRB, who is the chair, but he uh, unfortunately can't be with us due to pre-scheduled um, things he had to do, uh, including with his, his home village, um, pre-planned. At least I know you're awake. Um, and he does, uh, he sends his regrets and, uh, and says hello to everyone and uh, hopes to be able to join again next year. Um, I think for the case management working group, I'm the, I'm the focal point for the team, so I do work quite closely with uh, Iqbal during the year as well. Obviously, we all know that prevention is, uh, is what's going to save lives in the long run, but in the meantime, it's access to uh, quality care that is going to save lives and contribute to the 90% decrease in the uh, target of the global roadmap. So that's where, uh, where our work focuses. Some of these you've seen. We had a meeting, another successful meeting uh, in November here. I think one of the things that we saw is we're now in the case management working group getting a much better balance between emergency intervention research, but also country representatives. And that's where the longer term work, not the emergency response uh, so much, but the uh, early cases, what happens when there are few cases and the emergency partners aren't there yet. And to have them participating is, uh, is really important. Uh, I think one of our key achievements is, uh, is this. It's ugly, it will look better soon, but it is uh, a, the protocol or guidance on the treatment of cholera uh, in children with severe, who have severe acute malnutrition. This is a, a topic that has come up over and over again. Um, at a previous meeting, we had seen that uh, 11 protocols were circulating at one point with quite varied uh, recommendation. So to have one uh, common tool is, uh, is really, it's, it's a big step forward. We will have, there'll be a couple that people can look at, but just recognize it has not been, it doesn't look pretty yet, but the content is there. Um, the other thing is, as has been said, we've contributed to the, uh, the WASH and uh, infection prevention control. I think I would also just like to have a, a quick shout out. I don't know if Maggie Montgomery from the WASH, from uh, the WASH team at WHO is here. But last week at the uh, World Health Assembly, a resolution on Washington healthcare facilities was passed. And I think this is something that's extremely important for us as well as having standard level, basic level wash in those healthcare facilities will also help to prevent the spread of the transmission of cholera when a first case appears in a, a healthcare structure in a primary healthcare facility, for example. Um, we also uh, contributed as well to the, to the development of the National Cholera Framework and, um, and this. So you all have a copy. This is the new Outbreak GTFCC Outbreak Manual. Uh, I have had comments on how small it is, but it's so that it can fit in a pocket. So remember when we all went to the field for the first time, we were younger and our eyesight was better. Um, it's uh, just to say that I'm... I'm they let me stand up here. I will take my time and talk about it. Uh, what's important as well is that the main form will not be the paper form. Although it will be available, it will also be available on the web and uh, as a version that you can download and use offline. Um, and we also have a version on an app. We're going to be doing a demonstration of this telephone app called Cholera. And this book is, in fact, embedded in that so you can it'll also be downloaded and so you'll be able to use it on a phone where you can make the type bigger um, or you can do it on a computer tablet etc I think one other thing I want to say is all the an the appendices in the back that you can't read um, it's because they're downloadable tools so this is really to let you know what's available but they're not expected to be used in this form these are tools that you'll be able to go to the web you, they all have things you can send them to other people via WhatsApp, which is the most common thing in the field at the moment, or other tools. But um, just that's that's really how these are going to be going to be used. Um, as I said, we'll do an app demonstration. Continuing areas of work. One of the um, one of the key messages that came from the countries that were who were at the meeting was that that. What is needed is very practical, 
very uh, clear, non-ambiguous guidance. And this is because as more and more people who are working in primary health care, community health workers, are the ones who are going to be providing first-line treatment. And this was a, a clear ask. I think what we're seeing as well is that more and more uh, training on cholera is being included in primary health care training, in community health care worker training. And these, these are the tools that they want to be able to have for people to go out uh, into the field with. So that's something that is a priority for us over the next year. Um, and it means things like a prettier version of this, uh, the treatment for, uh, for malnutrition. Um, we're going to be continuing working on the app. And I do want to say that this phone app, uh, the, the catalyst to make it happen, it had been an idea, but it really came from the field. It came from Yemen, quite frankly, of people saying, we can't get everybody out to train them. What resources do we have that can be used and can get to people in the field who are treating patients? So um, just although I'm not doing the app demonstration, I think it's a, a recognition that this was really a field ask, and this is us being, being building on that in a very multi-sectoral way. Um, and the other thing that has also been raised in most of these presentations this morning is this, whatever we call it, whether it's a rapid response team, uh, community health workers, uh, outbreak investigation teams, et cetera, it's this idea of, of the community aspects of both uh, um, investigation and treatment and response, and how do we build that together? How do we build uh, that into existing programs? Uh, and this, again, is something that, is, as Dominique said, surveillance isn't cholera-specific. Much of this kind of very early response isn't cholera-specific either. It needs to be built into investigation teams aren't going to be there just for cholera. Um, and that's going to be a big piece of work over the next year of how do we ensure that, that all of the pieces, the multi-sectoral aspect is there. This may be my DTFCC secretariat hat, but... Um, that's okay. I'm willing to do that. But how do all these pieces work together, and how do we fit them where they can, where it's appropriate, into pre-existing structures? The other research priorities, um, as we said, this is this is a um, this document on the treatment of cholera in SAM is a document that I think most of us who in the field recognize is a compromised document. We don't have the research. We don't have the evidence to put something better out. And I think this is something that is, uh, it's, a, it's a real priority to be able to have better evidence so that we can improve this. Um, the other area is the treatment of pregnant women. Uh, I think it's globally recognized for anyone who's treated patients in the field that there is high fetal loss in uh, w pregnant women who have cholera, but we don't have good guidelines on what to do with it. And happily, uh, even discussions yesterday, we're, we're going to hopefully move forward in that field. Um, and the other thing, the other research priority is on um, the chemoprophylactic or preventive uh, um, antibiotic use in the, um, in the community that comes up in many countries, but especially in the context of global antimicrobial resistance, what is the place? Uh, what is this place? And I think I will end there. And I just thank uh, the whole working group and especially Iqbal for his leadership over the year. <laughs>